everyone. So we are looking at lead code number 210. It's course schedule two. And I made a video on course schedule one. Highly recommend checking that out. This is just building off of that problem or that pattern that I used to solve that problem. And what we're doing here is, again, we are first assessing what is this question asking and what is the underlying data structure or algorithm that we want to implement that's going to solve this, this particular question. And so for this, this is a graph problem. And more specifically, it is a directed acyclic or cyclic graph. And what we want to find out is, number one, is there a cycle? If there is a cycle, then we, we, cannot, we cannot take all these courses. It's going to return an empty array. If there's not a cycle, then we want to sort these numbers in a way that you can take all the courses. So let's go ahead and read over the prompt. Uh, there are a total of n courses to that, that you take and that are labeled from 0 to n minus 1. Some courses may have prerequisites. For example, prerequisites of i is a of i, b of i. This means that if you take course bi before ai, given the total number of courses, num courses, and a list of prerequisite pairs, return the ordering of the courses you should take to finish all of the courses. If there may be very, uh, if there are many valid answers, return any of them. If it is impossible to finish all courses, return an empty array. Okay, so again, I highly recommend checking out course schedule one that I did because this builds off of that. So what this question is asking is we have two courses. If you want to take course number one, you have to take course number zero. Now, because there's no other, uh, no other data in this array, that means that you don't, there's no prerequisites to take course zero. So we can take course zero, and then to take course one, we've already taken course zero. So there's two courses we can take, and the order is that we're going to take course zero first, and then we can take course one. Input number two, or example number two, there's four courses here. The prerequisites are one and zero. Two, for course two, the prerequisite is zero. For course three, the prerequisite is one. And for course three, the prerequisite is two. So again, this is a graph, and we wanna, we wanna try to visualize it in that way. Uh, so we can see that there is no prerequisites for zero. Okay, zero does not come up in the zeroth index on any of these edge lists. So there's no prerequisite for zero. So we can take zero here, and we can take zero here, and now we can take course one, and we can take course two. Because we have taken course one, and we have taken course two, the first prerequisite for course three, we can take that. That allows us to take course three. Or, because we've already taken course two, we can also take course three. And so the output is 0, 2, 1, 3, or it could be 0, 1, 2, 3. And there's a name for this sort of sorting. It's called topological sort. And that is basically what we're doing here. We're just running topological sort on a graph problem. OK, so let's get into this. So now, I'm if you've seen my course schedule one video, I'm basically doing the exact same thing. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and build out my adjacency list. Okay, we're going to take n, and then we're going to take edges. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create an array. That's going to be our <clears throat> adjacency list. And the length of this array is going to be n. And the we're going to fill each one of the um, elements of the array with another empty array. And again, I want to reiterate that when we are creating this array, we are filling each element of that array with a brand new array that is mapped to a specific place in memory. It's not the same array. If you do new array, and then you do length n, and then do dot fill and you toss an array. This is the same array that's being filled in every element of that parent array, which you don't want. That'll cause that'll cause bugs. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna iterate over this. Uh, let edge of edges. <clears throat> and now what we want to do is we want to pull out our source 
and our destination. And that's basically just the first two elements of, of this right here. Okay, so we're gonna have edge and then our adjacency list. I'm gonna push in adjacency list at source. We're gonna push in the dest. And this will create an adjacency list for a directed graph. Okay, and then we'll return our adjacency list. And again, if we wanted to do an undirected graph, then we would just mirror this. We'd do an adjacency list, toss in the destination, and push in the source. Okay, and what that does is that essentially creates an undirected graph, but we want a directed graph, so we're gonna leave that out. All right, and now we are doing a depth first search and we're, what we're doing here is we're checking to see are there back edges? Is there a cycle in this, in this graph when we traverse it from each particular node, from each particular vertex? And if there is a cycle, then we cannot have, we cannot take all the courses and we just wanna go ahead and return an empty array. If there's not a cycle, as we go through the traversal, we wanna push in each one of the elements as we depart it, and that will go ahead and give us our topological sort, in the order in the in, in topological sort. Okay, so we'll do a const depth first search, and we're going to add our node in. We're going to have our adjacency list. <clears throat> we're going to have our visited. We're going to have our arrive depart and then we're going to have our result which is going to be our top sort and again if you're not familiar with this um, I, I highly recommend checking out the book introduction to algorithms um, it, it's it's it, there's a chapter on graphs that's really comprehensive that goes over step by step uh, you, you want to figure out the edge classifications and how to get edge classifications on directed directed graphs so Good. It's if, if this is unclear, I highly recommend checking that out. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to have our arrive, and this is a timestamp. So at our node, we're going to increment this. We are going to have our visited at our node. We're going to set that to true. Okay, and now we're going to just follow our basic pattern for depth first search. So let neighbor of adjacency list at node and if we have not visited this we're going to check well first we're going to add this to neighbor to our visited okay and now what we want to do is check to see if there's a cycle so depth first search on our neighbor adjacency list, visited, arrive, depart, top sort. And if, if there is a cycle, we want to go ahead and return true. Okay. The other case where there might be a cycle is uh, if, if the depart at neighbor equals zero, meaning we never departed out of there. That means we're gonna return true. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna increment our departure at node, increment that. We're gonna add this node into top sort and we're gonna return false. Okay. So it's a slight change. If you checked out my course schedule one video, you can see that the only thing we did was just add this top sort here and push in the node. That's all we had to do. Everything else is the exact same code. All right, and now we do our main function here. Again, this is just a, a pattern. It's a template. 
it's good to have these that way when you come across these types of questions it doesn't throw you off you know exactly what to implement and then you can just change things slightly to fit uh, the current problem so first we're going to do is go ahead and build our graph our adjacency list I'm sorry build adjacency list and again they give this they give us this graph in a edge list so uh, our n here is going to be num courses and our edge list is going to be prerequisites q u i f l t e s okay now we have to go ahead and create all our variables so we have our const visited which is just an empty object uh, our arrive and uh, here what we can do is just use that new array syntax and this will be the length of the array that's our num courses and then we want to dot fill this in with zero this is our timestamp that we're doing and so you can you can do it this way okay and then we have our top sort and we'll also set that to an empty array okay and now we're just going to follow a very classic depth first search uh, we're going to do let vertex equals zero uh, vertex is less than adjacency list dot length vertex plus plus if we have not visited this node or this vertex we're going to traverse and here we just check if at vertex okay so if this step for search at this vertex list arrive If this returns true, that means there's a cycle in there, then we just want to return an empty array. Right? Because if there's a cycle, then it's impossible to finish all the courses. We just return an empty array. And if not, then we have traversed through the whole graph, and here we have sorted it topologically by going through that depth first search, uh, depth first search traversal. So just return. And that is it. Let's go ahead and run this. Let's see here. DFS is not defined. Whoops. Lowercase. Okay. And we are good. Yeah. And so again, it just shows that when you when you come across these variation variations, by having these patterns ingrained or just having them on hand, all you really have to think about is what is this question asking? Is it depth first search? Is it breadth first search? Is it topological sort? And once you can just map that, then it becomes you can actually solve these very, very quickly and easily. Um, so yeah, that is course schedule two. I hope you liked it and I'll see you on the next one.